tell the people a little bit about, about yourself. Yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt. So first and foremost, Ryan, you already know, man, the homie, the marketing guru. I appreciate you having me on the show. I'm super excited to get on and just chop it up. Uh, for those uh, that have just joined, my name is John D. Saunders. I'm the founder of 54 Digital. We're a web design studio slash branding agency. And we focus primarily on startups, helping, helping them develop an, an online brand in retrospect and in regard to brand identity and web design and development that's, uh, that's correlated with analytics and rooted in, in data. So that's pretty much my spiel. I'm also the founder of blackillustrations.com, which is a platform where you can download illustrations featuring folks of color and both free and premium packs. And then I'm also the founder of blackwallet.org. So like yourself, man, a serial entrepreneur focused on, on building systems and taking those systems and delegating them so I can continue to build. Yeah. So let's talk, let's talk a little bit more about that because you, okay. you do have a lot going on. How are you able to kind of divvy up your time and, and how do you focus? I mean, do you have a main focus of businesses? Do you split them up evenly? How, do, how does that work for you? So for me and, and you know, one, you were a huge motivation for me, probably about four and a half, five years ago. Um, I was doing a lot of things in the business, primarily as a web design agency owner, we were doing every service. So SEO, SEM, web design development, and it was just overwhelming, right? And so when you started talking about systems and building SOPs and, and having operating procedures that you can take and delegate to other team members, that's when the light uh, went off. And I was like, this is what I need to do in order to scale my efforts. So for me, you know, 5-4 Digital is the web design agency, and that's the catalyst for everything. And so I treat the agency as almost like the wheelhouse that powers every other business that we have. So by building systems on web design on, okay, this, when we get a client, this is the onboarding process. We have a, a standardized process. Uh, this is how we're going to work through that process with the client. And then we have a specific checklist and specific operating procedures that we use to get it done. Since we've niched down to just do web design branding and, and having a focus in, in using their historical analytics to make informed decisions on design and development, it's really systemized it to the point where I can take that system and I can duplicate it for other businesses. So when I had the idea for blackillustrations.com, for example, in March, you know, it was essentially just treating that idea as a client. So bringing it into the agency and saying, hey, guys, this is the idea that I have. This is how I want to execute it. And it's just literally following that procedure to get it done. The same one we use for when we bring on clients. Yeah, I think, I think that's so key because, you know, just on the topic of kind of like side hustles and side businesses, it's kind of like a lot of agencies pipe dream, in my opinion, that I'm going to build this awesome agency and then I'm going to start my own companies and just treat them like clients. And in my agencies in the past, we've tried to do that and it has never worked. Um, I think mainly because of, well, a, a number of things. Number one is that we didn't necessarily have a specific process for that type of business, right? Um, and it just, and also to just kind of understanding how does a staff member kind of prioritize client work, right? If it's internal versus external, it just got a little bit mucky when we were doing like more of the enterprise stuff. So are you able to do it because, because of the processes and just because like, you know, you, you can build a website in like a week or like, how did you, how were you able to get your team to focus on like, client work and, and that at the same time in terms of like load balancing? So when, when it comes to like calendar and, and kind of divvying up that we try to block out specific times throughout the day for that are allocated to, to specific type of clients. So for example, right now we have about eight websites that we're working on in queue. Um, we'll divvy it up where a certain project will have a lot of time. Usually it's an estimate, you know, it's like, so for example, if we're doing like a website audit in regards to doing quality assurance and just making sure all the links and everything are working properly, you know, that usually takes about 45 minutes for a 10 to 20 page website. So we can almost estimate how long that'll take. But as you know, man, as an agency owner, sometimes things take longer, things happen, this has happened, but at least that gives us a benchmark to work from. And so that's helped us divvy up it in that way. Now for me, with these, these side hustles, especially blackillustrations.com, it's on a smaller scale. So that business maybe does like maybe 10 to 30K per month in revenue. So we don't have to necessarily allocate a ton of time to it. But one thing I've learned from you is for anything that's taking me longer than 15, 20 minutes within that business, I'll create a process for it and I'll delegate it to a team member. So we segmented in two ways. And this is, again, similar to what you do. 
you have almost like a virtual assistant or someone that's doing that data entry, the stuff that just takes mundane time to do, right? And then you have a person on top that's kind of uh, uh, reviewing what that person is doing and almost acting like the catalyst behind, okay, this is where we need to prioritize and this is where we need to get things done. And that's really helped, man. But ultimately, with Black Illustrations, creating operating procedures for, okay, if the illustrations are coming in, they need to go into Q&A and get reviewed. Now that it's approved, it goes to the designer. The designer creates the, the, uh, the assets that we need for the landing page, and then it goes and it launches, and then we do the Facebook ad campaign. And so it's pretty, it's pretty systematized. So that's really, really helped um, kind of ease that, that, that issue of just things taking so much time. Do you, do you feel like the cap, or why is it that you feel like Black Illustrations is smaller? I feel like there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of potential, um, you know, especially someone like yourself who's, you know, you're a leader in the community, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like people definitely look to you for, for that. I mean, do you feel like, is that something that you feel like you could do full time, I guess, or is that something that will always be a side hustle for you? I think it could be full time. You know, when I, when I launched it, it was kind of like, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, you know, when I launched, I'm like, okay, I think this is a good idea. You know, I did my keyword research and I saw that people, this is something that people wanted. For sure. There's, there's a good amount of search volume, but there just wasn't a, a tool or an asset that anyone created that did, the, that did the job. And so when I launched, I was like, okay, I think this will do well, but I didn't know the extent of how well it would do. So um, now, probably in the last like eight or nine weeks, I've realized how large this thing could become. And now I'm trying to scale and build out a team and finish building out these processes so I can pump out more illustrations. Right now we're doing about two to four illustration packs per month. Um, and then we have a subscription base as well. And we've had over 50,000 downloads on the site, probably 600,000 visits yeah. to the website. So it's done, it's done really well, man. But you're right, it, you know, it could be a standalone business. Yeah, I just, I, I, w I always look at a business like that. I mean, whenever you've got something that can kind of build its own flywheel of marketing, right? I mean, something like that is, heavy on referrals from people heavy on PR you know what I'm saying like there's so many ways to 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 just market that organically you know what I'm saying um that I feel like it uh it quickly becomes more than a side hustle if you if, if, agreed if you just pump out more and more and more you got the subscription model going I mean like there's really no reasons why like you couldn't become like an icon pack you know what I'm saying or, or flat icon.com you know what I'm saying obviously those are massive sites but like the, 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 the demand is definitely out there, especially right now. I mean, companies are very Absolutely. sensitive to everything. So um, I think it's a great idea, dude. I knew you were going to have success with it. Um, and Thanks, I was when I saw you launch it, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think that there's there's a lot of potential that could be done with that business. Um, I mean, what are you doing to market it right now? Are you running any pay traffic? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing Facebook ads. Um, we're doing, and then we're just doing organic content, content marketing. We, yeah. We're doing partnerships with other illustrators. So basically we compensate them to create an illustration pack and then we put that illustration pack on the site. They get 20% of every transaction that goes through. So they're making money on the back end, and then they're able to promote it to their audience as well, which is done really well. Um, and then we're just really pushing the subscription. That's, that's been, I think that's the key to really scaling it and getting it to the point where, you know, it's, it's automated every month. It's making a, a, a nice uh, MRR and we can just keep it moving. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I, I really like the idea. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And so you've also you got you've got also got Black Wallet too. Is that still something that, or did you sell that one? No, no, okay. <laughs> I still have that one. That one's still running right now. We're just doing weekly blogs. Right now, the revenue around that is primarily sponsored space on Instagram. We have about um, almost three hundred thousand followers, so nice. we do sponsor posts there, and then we have a, a good amount of book sales and a good amount of apparel sales. So that business. Is, is doing pretty well. I, honestly, that could be a standalone as well. That one I haven't, I don't allocate a ton of time to my staff pretty much just kind of handles that and manages it, but it's, uh, it's growing month over month. So I'm, I'm, I'm good with that one. Yeah. That, I mean, I mean, both of them, I think could, could be big. And you, you had a, I saw that you just sold an e-commerce store too, right? Yeah. I sold, um, I actually sold three. This oh. was man three, four years ago. So the first store I sold was Love Travel Co., which was a travel brand. That, yeah. It was great because we had like physical product and we had print on demand. So it was um it was really low maintenance. Um I just I don't know, man. You know how it is, dude. You just you grow it and then I just kinda got bored and I was like, you know, I don't want this to go to waste. So I sold it. Sure. Well, I, I think a lot of businesses too, because I I've got, you know, similar experience. I've started a lot of different companies and some fizzled out, some I sold, some I just kind of lost interest in. 
Um, but I think as you grow as an entrepreneur, you just realize that there's certain businesses that are just not worth your time. Like it just, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to run a business that's not going to make more than like a couple million bucks a month at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's no point in starting yeah. something that, that is, is, doesn't have a cap. Like that's what happened. My shoelaces store laces out. It just got the point. I'm like, this is going to cap out at 25 grand and I'm spending this much time. Like, no, no, no. Like for what, well, that's one contract at my agency. Like, what am I doing here? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a great yeah. learning experience. And, and like, I never would have understood that too, that you constantly got to be like looking to what's next. You get great experience from doing those things. You know, you make a little bit of money off it too, and then you just do something bigger next time, you know? 100%, 100%. Now you can leverage everything that you learn in that business on the next venture. So I remember when you were doing Laces Out and how you grew it, you were able to take all those, all that, everything you learned and apply it to, you know, clients or other projects. It's just, you yeah. know, really learning experience. And, and like you said, as you grow, it's like, you can't really, you got to look at things that are going to have that, that growth potential where you can kind of grow yourself out of business, potentially sell it, you know, so that's, that's what I'm looking now, man. And I've really focused my effort for the last few years. And you guys, you guys don't do any marketing at the agency, right? No, 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 more. no marketing. We just do. So what, what's worked for me is social media, Instagram. Mm -hmm. So, so like three main things, Instagram carousels has been amazing, man. Posting carousels every other day to my community has been has been super dope, man. We get and that's it. on you. Sorry to cut you off. That's on your personal profile, right? That's Not on my personal Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I just post uh, content on web design and entrepreneurship. That's where our efforts are focused, and so we get a good amount of leads from that. And then I do a lot of stuff in, in a few Facebook groups. So one thing that's kind of pushing us over the edge, especially uh, in regards to web design, is focusing on Webflow. So about two, maybe two and a half years ago, I found out about Webflow, which is a CMS or content management system, similar to WordPress. Um, and I was like, eh, it ain't nothing with WordPress right now. Like, I'm not trying to learn something new. And then I just started watching a few YouTube videos. I was like, you know what, let me just build out a site and see how it is. And so I built out the site and I was like, wow, man, this thing really has potential. And so I didn't really bring it to clients because I wanted to make sure that I knew it really well. And I started to build it one site, then two, then maybe then I did three sites and I was like, yo, this is, this might, this might be the one right here. And then what I did was I was like, you know what, I'm going to allocate X amount of time to WordPress and I'm just going to take maybe 20 to 30% of my time and really learn Webflow. And it paid off 10, tenfold. Um, yeah. So, so um, we're a Webflow expert agency. There's only one of, we're one of 50. So we get three to four leads per week just from that. A lot of um, larger like enterprise companies, startups maybe series a series b are looking more so toward a tool like that just because it's easier for them to manage on a larger scale and it's um it's worked really well man we've been getting a ton of leads and, and been able to to increase our our cost and provide premium websites for um on the platform so that's been a big help and so you only do webflow now right you will not do wordpress either pretty much man like <laughs> what i do is and you know you know david martin man that's the homie who yeah. attacks like um yeah pretty much What's helped us the most, man, in growth is really niching down. Like niching down has been the best thing that that I've done. You know what I mean? Because you know, focusing our efforts on Webflow, and we do Shopify as well. So Webflow is great, but it's not there in regards to e-commerce yet. Mm -hmm. So we'll build like custom buildouts in in um, in Shopify using like Shogun, and you'll have like a custom integrated site. But ultimately, yeah, Web Webflow and Shopify are pretty much our go-to's now. Yeah, that's, that's awesome here. I told you when we were just getting started that, um, you know, I like to focus this, these kind of interviews and podcasts on, on three things. And we already talked about the productization and, and building processes and SOPs and how you've been able to literally launch, um, you know, add hundreds of thousands of revenue monthly by just building processes and, and scaling those to new companies. And now you just talked about um, positioning, right? It's something that, again, we're pushing really heavy on folks in the blueprint. And I think a lot of folks are really hesitant to get started, especially after they've had some success. Maybe they're doing fifty hundred thousand dollars a month, but they're just stuck. Um, and I tell them all the time, I'm like, you know, who do you serve? Like, like, why would somebody come to you? Like, why are you the authority? Why are you the expert? Like, you're standing at like your value prop is literally like if your value prop is like we're gonna get you more organic traffic or leads. Like, everyone's saying the same shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, we teach we teach four different ways of of like positioning and specialization, and one of them um, is just that. It's like like being like a Shopify expert or being like an emerging tech like that. It's super fucking smart. Um, and it's, it's, it's always refreshing to hear people who have had success. I mean, same thing with us. We just moved to a different model um, in, in terms of how we're delivering our SEO services through my calendar is like, is it's, it's through the roof. Like it's just book nonsense. Bruh, it's bro. I, I saw the update on your website and I was like, yo, this is, this is it. The SEO sprint you're referring to, right? 
it's brilliant, man, because that, especially right now, with all of the, so, so here's what I've seen. A lot of these larger companies, even enterprise level companies, they're realizing that, yo, this remote workforce is life. Like I can get literally the best person at their job because I don't have to necessarily have them in my office. I can compensate this expert and I can get a high level of work at someone that specialized in a specific skill. So it's like, it's a no brainer, man. So you guys doing that, I can't even imagine what your calendar is looking like right now. Yeah, I was. I even looked at it. I'm like, shit. Maybe I should order this. <laughs> that, and that, <laughs> and that, order a sprint right quick. That that's part of it. Basically, my calendar has been filled with people that have been like, in or around our ecosystem for the last couple of years. I just, but they've just been like, we're going to pay eighty grand for SEO. Like, it's just like, I'm sorry, but it's just not worth it. Um, you know, I was talking to Caesar today about it, and basically, I was saying like, look, everything that happened with COVID too, like. I had to take a hard look at us and being like, what are we like, what value are we really offering the market right now? Like people just aren't looking for this. So like we had to adapt, you know what I'm saying? And offer just um, a completely different, almost like shockwave to like what we had been doing. Um, and it's opened up again, like so much more, just kind of like it, it, it's, it's a more specialized market, like not like a, a small business owner is going to come to us and be like, I want this. Cause they don't know what the fuck we're talking about, you know, but the right customer, the, the company with the internal marketing manager, um, that just wants really good work done fast and doesn't have to deal with like a 10 K overhead and like constantly dealing with the agency. Like that's where we're going to come in. So like software companies, e-com, like really doing well with that already. Um, but, and also too, what's, what's interesting about it is, you know, Caesar was like, well, look, we're giving up 12 months of revenue. You know, our average retainer was like 5,000 a month. Like we're giving up basically our average sprint is like in the 15 to 20 K range right now. Uh, like all in for, for like almost a year. Right. And I was like, well, if you look at like 5k collected over 12 months, that's basically, you know, one sprint will take us two months to get 15 K. I'm basically like, we're actually doing an extra $5,000 in revenue because we're collecting that all up front. And also with sprints, you, you pay us up front. Like there's no, like you pay us up front for the sprint. So like, we're not chasing out open invoices. Like we're not sending proposals, like the amount of time that it's saving us to, and we're actually condensing all the work and doing the same amount of work, uh, exactly what the client wants, right? We're still servicing that pain point and just with a different angle. It's just been like, dude, sales calls. Like I had five sales calls today and all of them were like, yeah, let's go. And I'm just like, all right, give me your credit card. I'm like, literally like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, done. I love that. So, I love it's it. so much better. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, man. Oh yeah. And it's like the work's done and it's, you know, it's over and you can, you know, keep it moving. Are you going to like, so can they order like multiple sprints or is it more so yeah. like more sprint? Got it. Got it. So, yeah. So basically what we're doing is we're drawing them up. Like they're coming in for analysis. We're running like an analysis ahead of time. And then like reviewing it on the call and being like, look, based on what I just told you, you've got X, Y, and Z opportunities. Like these, these are the sprints that we recommend. So I'll actually build it out over like six months, but sure. it's, 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 it's like, and when you present that to you, you're basically setting an anchor of like, Oh, they're like, okay, it's going to cost 30 K. But then I'm like, look, well, we can just get started with the first sprint. That's going to cost you 5 K. And then look, they're, they're anchored at 30 to five, no contracts, no commitments. And then after we do that first sprint, we basically got a roadmap to them be like, look, now we can do this sprint and this sprint, you know what I'm saying? So got we're kind it, of like, got it. Um, so there's they're almost using it like sprint one is like a tripwire to get them in. And then, uh, we're, we're developing a new position right now. That's kind of like an account manager inside sales. That's going to be like constantly like talking to clients that we have and trying to get them on other ones. That's how we're going to extend into like a, an MRR, but just not true MRR. Um, but just looking at like customer kind of, you know, life cycle value and like how we can increase that over time. But yeah, I'm excited about it. We've been, we've been putting a lot of work into it and, um, it's good stuff. And yeah, anyways, we're not here to talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, so you got the agency, you got Black Wallet, you got, um, you've got, sorry, Black Illustrations. Are there, is there anything else in your portfolio right now that, that you're working on? No, man. So I, I mean, kind of, I have, man, I have a, um, my personal brand, but which is pretty much Black Wallet Digital. Uh, but I have an online course, Web Design Studio Accelerator, where I teach freelancers how to become agency owners in the web design space. And that's it, man. I'm, I'm really trying to, I'm owned in on like three core focuses. And I mean, that doesn't really make sense, but, <laughs> but no, three core like. things that I'm, that I'm really allocating my time to, man, and no more like new side projects or anything like that. Just these three things and then keep it moving, man. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. And what you, would you say the agency is your main focus? Yeah, absolutely. What absolutely. are you, what, what are your kind of goals and vision for, for that company? So I probably want to grow. Here's my thing, man. For me, I don't, you know, I don't need to become like this multi-million dollar agency. Like, I mean, we are, but 
I don't need to grow to a point where I have like 40 or 50 employees. Like we have six right now. I'm, I'm happy with that. I might hire maybe one more like junior designer and then promote uh, our visual design we have now. But that's it, man. I'm, I'm happy with that. You know, I'm able to live a life that I, that I enjoy and I have free time. And I'm able to do other things and work on other projects. Sure. And, um, you know, one of my goals is my, my ambition, my ambition, uh, my most ambitious goal is probably to just start to buy into real estate. Start to buy into real estate and, and really uh, and start to grow that is like another hustle, yeah. my last hustle. But for me, the growth that we've seen this year has been exponential, man. And I just want to incrementally grow it 20, 25% per year. Um, that's it. You know, I don't, I don't have like, that's my ambition. Yeah, actually, before you know it, you're going to have 40 employees though. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, it's crazy, man. You're right yeah. though. You're right. Well, I, 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 th I think what happens is that um, there's this concept of normalization, normalization that happens with everything in life, right? I mean, like our, our, the current president, last president would have you, like, we've been so normalized to his behavior because he's done it for so long that like, he says something stupid and we're like, uh, like what? He didn't say anything stupid. He's just talking. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I, I, the same thing happens in business. I think when it, when you're, you get kind of just used to normalized to your growth, you know what I'm saying? And before you know it, you're doing 10 million revenue dollars employees. And like, it was never the place that you wanted to be, but you're just continuously doing the work day after day and you're just growing. So that's what happens, you know? Um, sure. So your goals kind of normalize and you just, if you just become normalized to a certain revenue amount, so just everything, right. Um, it's, it's exactly. an interesting thing that happens, exactly. but, but yeah, I mean, I, I do think that just, you know, the, it, it's, it's just really smart how you position yourself. You're very active in the community. I, I want to talk a little bit about lead generation too, because you talk about Instagram, which I think is really interesting in this space. Um, but you know, you've positioned yourself really well with your other companies too, uh, between Black Wallet and with Black Illustrations that can really feed back into the agency really, really well, you know, um, and, and especially with Black Wallet, like being able to position yourself as a, a leader outside of the SEO community too is, I, I think is huge, right? Um, for like what you want to do next. But you have mentioned that you have, you have, how, how many followers do you have on Instagram right now? Your personal profile. Uh, I think 17,000, 17,000, 17,000. That's, and, and you get really good engagement on your posts too. I mean, they're not just like, they're not just like fluff followers, right? Um, yeah. 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 I mean, and so man, I, I never spend, I mean, I've done some ads in the past and I do ads for the course, but that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Ads, ads, ads actually don't grow your profile. Dude, I advertise so much in my Instagram. Profile. They don't man. It's wild. Wow. Wow. <laughs> People don't follow you off. I think part of it is just kind of like when somebody clicks on an ad, it takes you to kind of like an ad version of your profile. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, just, it's not like the full profile. Yeah. People, I mean, people see an ad too and they're like, who's this annoying asshole? Like, let me just, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't want to buy it. I'm sick of this shit. Um, but, but so you have 17,000 followers. How did you grow? Like growing on Instagram in this space is really hard. Like, how did you, first of all, how did you do it? And like, did you, like, what was your kind of your strategy behind it? So, it, I really started to grow when I when I took my Twitter threads and I posted them on Facebook. So I'm a big advocate of of trying to work on something once and then being able to repurpose that content in multiple ways. And so I posted like a few Twitter threads and they had started to create some traction. I'm like, yo, people like this. You know, I'm getting some free shares, I'm getting retweets. Let me snapshot this and put it on Instagram. And I started doing that. And that's when I saw exponential growth because people were cycling through my content. They were commenting, they were asking questions. I was getting DMs. And so I just kept that consistent. And, and as soon as I saw that carousels were starting to, to become popular, I created a template and I basically created a Google sheet and I spent maybe one or two hours a week just writing up maybe two or three pieces of content. I pushed that to the designer. The designer would lay out the, um, um, the carousel and then we schedule the post and they go out and that that really helped me grow my following and so when i so when i saw that happen on ig i was like okay bet i know i can do this similar in facebook groups so i chose like two or three facebook groups and i just engaged with the, uh, the audience each day i made sure to post one thing in each in each um in each group that was something that could be actionable so instead of saying hey you know we all need a facebook page it was hey these are some insights that I saw. Hey, here's a tip or hey, here's a freebie. So you know how it is, man. Value, value, yeah. value, value. And you become a thought leader in the space and then people want to collaborate and work with you. So what type of groups were those? Were those groups of marketers or groups of like business owners? Like what, what, what are the groups? It was pretty, groups? since I'm in web design, it was mostly web design. So I'm part of the Webflow global group, a part of like a WordPress mm -hmm. design development group, a part of a UI UX group. And I just post content in there of like the tools that I use. I post like my email templates, like just a whole bunch of stuff that, that's helped me grow. 
Yeah, no, that's interesting. And, and back to Instagram real quick too. So like, cause I think a lot of people and th- and this is me too. I actually hired like last year I was working with this kind of like Instagram consultant coach. I, I was like creating a lot of content on, on Instagram then and it was working. Um, but bro, it was just, it was like so much work, uh, uh because it, like I was paying him a couple thousand bucks a month and that was really only to like help me write copy and post. Right. And yeah. like, but I still had to come up with the concepts and like, I wasn't like, you, you have to come up with your own concepts really because otherwise yeah, it's not you do, content. You and and I, I think what a lot of people do when they, when they try a strategy like yours is that like, they don't put any thought or opinion into the content. They're just like either quoting somebody else, but taking like a Neil Patel quote and like putting it on their stuff, which doesn't work. Like it's got to come from you. But like that level of effort is a lot, man. Like it was a lot for me because I was filming the videos. I wasn't just doing that. And I kind of burned out on it. But like, at, like, how did they grow though? Because this, like, was it getting to the explore page or like, was it other people commenting and showing up? Like, cause Instagram is kind of a closed network in that sense. Like it's really hard to, I guess, it, were people like sharing their stories? I mean, like how, how, how a did lot you of, A lot of people, like I've had a few posts that had like two, 3000 reshares or sh- uh, like shared to their, to other audience members. So behind the scenes, and I don't even know this, man, people are yeah. sharing content. And it's compounding over time where people are seeing me come up on the Explorer page or see me and their friends are following me and then they're resharing on their, um, their, their, uh, their Instagram stories. And that's what helped me kind of, it, it, but it was a slow grow, man. I mean, I'm not going to say it happened overnight. I've been on Instagram. I don't even know now, seven years, eight how, years. How, how long have you been taking like this aggressive, like post every day strategy? I'd say I'm a, I'm going to guess a year, maybe a little bit longer. That's not too bad. I did yeah. it for like six months and I was like, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. <laughs> but you know, what's happened is like, I'll get DMs and people will hit me up like, oh, you know, I want to work with you. And yeah. it's good quality leads, you know? So with that said, it's, it's been working well. And um, it's just, it, you know, it's helped us grow the business. No, for sure. And look, I, I think what's important too, and again, like what we're rolling out. So we're actually kind of like relaunching, not relaunching the blueprint. We're just adding a, a, a more hands-on coaching element to it starting January 1st. And again, these are the three things that we're really teaching heavy in there, productization, positioning, and then also like really just mastering one lead gen source, right? Like one thing. And for me, like, like I, I would love to do Instagram because I still feel like there's white space for, especially like SEO voices. People always kind of t- like have that, just the lie that we tell ourselves that like, oh, like people on people, like people don't care about SEO stuff there. It's like, right. They don't care about like looking at like SEO spreadsheets and templates there, but there's, there's a certain level of insight that you can figure out by just doing it. Um, that people do want to see. Um, so I still think that there's a lot of white space there for, for, for people in the SEO and even the marketing space, just being kind of thought leaders. You can Um, even do SEO like, um, uh, Instagram carousel. So you can talk about Google search console does like really simple, like content because just people see it over time and then they, you know, they get used to it and you'll have like someone that works high up in the company be like, yo, this this is the guy right here. I agree. I agree. And people ask me why I don't do it. Cause I tell people to do it too. And I'm like, because I, I have YouTube, like YouTube is, YouTube is like my thing. Like YouTube is where my like content strategy starts and then I'll push it out from different places there. Like there, to me, there's still like the way that the way that we generate leads and interests is like, there's nothing more powerful than getting someone to watch a 15 minute video and like teaching them something, yeah. you know, and like being able to kind of alter the way that they think Instagram, you do it bit by bit over time. YouTube is like, you get that one video and you're in your Gucci and Instagram is just fee i mean you know you do youtube stuff too instagram's just kind of algorithm to get you lifted up there to and get get you in front of new people and the more you create the video grows in perpetuity instagram is like a one-time flash in the pan type vibe where like yeah. um you just got to keep pushing stuff out Go ahead. i agree man youtube is is definitely more powerful than ig it's it's you know it's intent based right people are searching for how do i do seo your video yeah. comes up and they work at i mean i'm not gonna type that in yeah. that simple but you know you, you get my, my i mean that's how i learned webflow like I, I i looked on webflow on youtube and i saw this guy Rand Siegel, who's basically like the face of webflow and then i watched like 30 of his videos and now the guy has a course he doesn't even do he doesn't even do anything else anymore all he does is sell his course now <laughs> yeah. it's crazy yeah i mean i kind of got to that point too where i was like I, i've been I'm focusing to get- on the blueprint for a while <laughs> um but, uh, and again, like we're taking, we're just making huge shifts in understanding. Like when I, when you really look at things again, like 2020 was a big year for me, like understanding right. that what got me to where I was, wasn't going to get me to where I wanted to be. I, I had to make significant changes, just understanding, you know, we get stuck, get stubborn in our egos and, and just kind of stuck in a way, like we're making, we're making money, we're growing like so what, but there's always kind of ways to kind of level. I had to level up my thinking this year, big time. Um, and one of those was understanding that like, again, like just looking at the core value, like the training that we have at the blueprint is amazing. The, the, the clients that we have come through um, and put action to it, 
get results. Like that, that's, that's never been an issue for us. Um, but again, when we really look at kind of like, is this providing the video training and Slack channel, is this really the best way that we can service our client? Like, and, and the answer to that is no. Um, it's great for some people who, who can watch the videos and go through and take action. But a lot of people, um, your microphone dropped a lot of people, um, Self learners. Yeah. It's yeah. A lot of people need the accountability. They need the coaching. They need to customize. Like they want to talk to somebody about like, you know, these concepts for their business. So that's what we're getting ready to roll out. Um, and then also just helping them understand like, like growing your business over a million dollars is not just about like doing better keyword research. Right. It's really not at all. Actually, um, <laughs> you know, like once you un like, once you, I mean, providing good service to me, it's kind of like going to a restaurant and like, I expect to eat good food at a restaurant. That's what I'm paying for. It's like, if somebody's paying you to do a job, your service, like you should be expected to do a good job. Right. Um, so what we want to really help people understand again, is these three things. Like you're stuck because you're positioning, you're not servicing the right, like what you're offering is not the right offer for who you're servicing. Like, let's work on that. Like, let's figure out who you should be servicing. Like, let's get your position in the market set. Um, and then after that, like, let's build you an offer. That's really, really, really going to uh, speak to that market. Like right there, you've got sales and marketing taken care of. You just fix your positioning and you're in. Like, it's not a matter of like learning Facebook ads. It's a matter of fixing. Who a lot of it is mindset. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And then after that, like I said, is going in and really productizing your service, just like you've done. Like if you are not doing the same thing over and over again, again, your business is just going to, it's just going to grow slower. Um, and it's going to be harder for you. Uh, and the final thing is just like you've done is like figuring out one or two things that can help you generate leads consistently. Like if that's working through Facebook groups and posting on Instagram, fucking do it. You know what I'm saying? If that's getting really good at Facebook ads and being able to, to pluck leads with paid traffic, then let's do that. Um, so these are the types of things that we're really working on doing and then just offering much more of, um, much more of our time. Actually, this one, I want to hire like two full-time coaches to help out to, um, you know, people that are like kind of known in the SEO space that can really help out with a lot of different things. So, um, so yeah. And then also just with Weber's too, just like changing how we, how we just completely positioned everything, you know? Um, so yeah big year for us um awesome. for everyone, I guess, awesome. yeah. and, and it's like one thing that i, I want to add to is you know a lot of folks like when you're doing consistent promo or just value-based content a lot of times you you create so many clients you create almost like this referral base of like a branding army of clients people that you work with collaborators that'll go out and sell your business for you so a lot of the business that comes in now especially in 2020, a lot of it is referral business. I'd say maybe 75% of our business is referral business. It's amazing. Yeah. Someone either collaborated with us or we just finished a project and they have someone else. And it's just been, it's, uh, it's been a good feeling. And that, and, and I mean, that's the impact too of, of having a really good product, providing a really good service. Um, but also getting the, and this is, this is why leads are so important because if you've got a great service, but nobody gets to experience it, then you're, you're just going to grow really slowly too. You know what I'm saying? Like you've got to, you've got to work with people. You've got to impact people's businesses. Um, you've got to get them to fuck with you in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, the referrals will come in for sure. So, uh, look, it's, it's, it's eight, almost 40 PM here. Uh, I do want to let you get you get back to your family. Um, tell the people oh, one more time, <laughs> uh, how, how, how they, how they can find you online. Oh yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, everything under John B. Saunders. If you're interested in collaborating, it's five, four digital.com or you can just do five, the number five, F O U R.com. And, uh, yeah, man, you can kick it to me in the DMS. I'm happy to answer any questions y'all have. And Ryan, always a pleasure, man. Awesome, man. I appreciate you coming on. Always fun talking. Uh, let's get together for lunch sometime. This vaccine is coming out. We should be good, man. Oh, there's this new spot, man, uh, called Red Rooster. I don't know if you've been there yet, but it is like, the food is insane. Nah, I'm down. I'm out in the suburbs now too. So hit me oh, up. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, <laughs> I'll text you after that. All right, brother. All Talk right, brother. To you. Peace. Thanks.